Hello and good evening, this is Ruth Pozuelo from Curable.com and uh, it is time again for DAX Fridays and uh, today we are going to go through for the first time uh, the time intelligence functions in particular we're going to go through the year to date, quarter to date and month to date so let's begin so here we have the north wind uh, data set uh, it is available for for free as a old data source uh, i will post a link on how to get uh, uh, the data i have it on another video and what we have here is we have a table with product names total sales and then we have a slicer with years and a slicer with uh, category names what we need to understand is that the north wind data set the data stops in may 6 1998 so today's date for this data set it is may 6. okay so it's important to remember as we are going to talk about dates so here we have the total sales right now for all the years. If I select 1998, choose 98, 97, and 96, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is, let me close this. We're going to create a new measure for year to date. And this is how you write it. You write total, year to date and then we have already a measure for the total sales so we're going to take that this is just a sum of sales i will show you in a second and then we're going to get date years to date and then that requires a column date which is our date column so something that is important to know is that uh, the time uh, functions uh, the DAX time intelligence functions require a continuous calendar which is the one that we have in here if you don't have this you need to make sure that you create it and i have a video on how to do this how to create this calendar so make sure that you have it otherwise it won't work and we are taking the column which has the continuous dates in our calculation for year to date okay so you have to have a separate table for a calendar and then that's the date is the one that you use in your dates year to date so it's very simple, right? Uh, now that we have that, we put it in our table and we see what happens. Okay. So now we have here year to date and then it's been filtered by product and also filtered by the category name. I just selected seafood to make the data set a little bit smaller. So 44,911 is that year to date if we think about it it should be 1998 because it's the current year for this data set right just to make sure here are the total sales for all years is at 131,000 if I choose here 1998 check it gives us exactly the same values which is correct if I choose 1997 it will give me the year to date for 1997 and because it is a complete year it will give me the entire year the same as for total sales and that's the same for 1996 so pair and square okay so what happens now if i add year i don't filter by anything i have the all three years let's make it a little bit bigger so we see something what do you think it would happen if I add now the year to date to this table? Will it give me the sales for all years or just for 1998? Or what do you think it would happen? 
think about it before you see the solution. Pause the video if you need it. So let's add year to date and see what happens. So what he's given us, he's given us sales for every year. But for the 1998, he's only given us the sales, of course, up to make six, right? Because we don't have any more data. You might think that it might give you the sales to April, but it won't. It will give you sales to the last day on your calendar because that's what you told him to do. You say, pick the date, last date, and then give me all the sales up to that date. So you have to make sure that you understand that. So now you might wonder, okay, so why am I getting the sales for 1997 here, but I don't get them here? Well, it's because you don't have the year. So if we would place the year column in here, and let's do a matrix because it gets easier to read. Then we have 1996 and then check out the total is exactly the same as here. 1997 is the same and 1998 is the same. So the year to date will give you year to date for all the years if you have that as a filter. But if you remove the year filter, it will give it only for the current year. So it's uh, an important distinction to you. But it's important for you to, to understand that. And the year to date, it will not end on the month. That perhaps that's what you could expect. It will end up on the last day that you have on your calendar. So if you have continuous calendars as I normally have, then that will be perhaps a problem when you are comparing dates. So you have to make sure that you understand that too. So now let's create a month to date, for example. And month to date, you create it exactly the same way you do year to date. Here you get the total sales and then date, month to date, and then you get the column and that's all you need. So let's build a table. We get product name. Let's put the total sales and then move month to date and put it in there and remove so we see something so here we have our month to date sales so now here you have to do the, exactly the same uh, thought process that you did or we did with year to date when you see this, the first thing you have to start thinking is like, okay, which year, which month? Okay, is this for 1998 or is it from 1997? Is it for this month? Remember that today's date, let's put it back. So, so we're in May, right? So what sales are these months to date? It is important that you always try to figure out what you are seeing on the data. So the best way to do it is you go into the calendar table, you get the year month, you put month to date, and then we make it a little bit bigger. And now we get all the years. So let's get our year slicer back. And here it says month to date, the total accumulated is 18,000. So if we go here 1998, which is our current year, May, that's what we should see, right? You see? Otherwise we can just see 
current year and then this is month to date because we haven't specified with year it takes the current year and then it takes current month which in this case is May but it will give us also month to date for other years if we ask for it if we put it as a filter okay so just make sure that you understand what filters are being applied even those that are implied like for example here when we don't have a year filter applied it's still giving us the current month and the current year okay so with that in mind you can start using this uh, um, you can start using these functions these tax functions remember also that month to date will give you the sales up to may 6. so it won't give you of course data that it doesn't have because those sales haven't come in but you might think that this was could be previous month it's not this is from the current month the current year unless you specify something else up to the date the last date on your date table so make sure you understand that and then quarter to date it, you build it exactly the same way and it behaves exactly the same way as the other two just let's build that so so quarter to date of our sales and then total oh, date quarter to date and then date and then let's move it at the right place and put it in there and again every time you do time uh, intelligence functions make sure you understand what you're watching what you're seeing and sometimes you need to add like I've done here um, some filters to actually see what's going on so now you should be able to tell me quarter to date this quarter to date which quarter it is which year it is right so which one is it if you are unsure download the file and check it by yourself but i'm sure that you already know the answer so now you might be wondering like okay maybe it's not that useful to have if you have a continuous calendar that means a calendar that updates every day or every refresh you might want be asking yourself that is not so useful to have uh, this year to date quarter to date month to date update or give you data up to the, just that current date that today's date and i have a particular case where it was very clear that it wasn't uh, i don't know if you've seen it it was one of my first videos this is a um, Power BI report that goes into Google Analytics and reports on sessions current year and the previous year and then it does a year over year, month over month and so on um, comparison. And uh, Google Analytics of course is something that you measure every day and you want to see how well or how bad you're doing like daily, weekly, monthly. So it is just not a, a good, um, I mean, I, you cannot use this year to date out of the box because it will give you a lot of trouble as the data is updating basically every time you refresh or every second, every time you get a visitor, you get new data in. And what happens is that none of these values will be correct ever basically so when i build this report instead of having year to date up to today's date i actually had year to date up to yesterday's so the day before date so we have fixed dates in this part of the report and then i have a report on today's 
date. How, how well was I doing during the day and previous week that same day? Because uh, the seasonality in Google Analytics is basically low during the weekends and then high during weeks. So if you want to do a little bit more advanced calculations, make sure you check out this video and also you can uh, uh, check out the formulas. And if you want an in-depth explanation about how those formulas uh, were created and how they work, then you can go to the Power BI community I wrote a blog post uh, explaining exactly how they were built. It is a little bit advanced, but I think that the year to date out of the box calculations are a little bit limited if you have continuous calendar. So this is all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you now have a better understanding on how to work with uh, time intelligent functions in uh, Power BI. If you like the video, please let me know by liking it. Uh, if you know about anybody else that is struggling with this topic, you just share it so they can also see and hopefully understand better. Comments, questions, suggestions, uh, either on the comment box or any of the social channels listed below. And uh, make sure you subscribe. Uh, I publish DAX videos every Friday. Have a great evening. Bye.